So welcome everyone to the December 6th meeting of the Hadley Select Board. Calling the meeting to order at 7 p.m. Um, we do first have a consent agenda. Yes, actually, Joyce wanted to. Um, I wanted to do just a uh, moment of silence at the beginning of our meeting tonight for the fire chief that has passed in um, West um, Montgomery. Uh, he was at a fire uh, at Montgomery and. Um, had a heart attack and after he had been working on the fire. And uh, I'd just like a moment of silence, please. And his name was Chief, Chief Stephen Fry. Um, but I, and I just want to add to that also that it's kind of a reminder to all of us um, that live here in Hadley and our surrounding towns that we sometimes take for granted what our firefighters and our police officers do. Um, and this is just an example of every day they put their lives on the line for us and um, just something that we should all keep in the forefront of our minds and appreciate and respect everything that they do for us. So thank you. Thank you, George. Thanks, Joyce. Okay, so first um, we have the consent agenda, and tonight we have minutes from October 4th, 5th, and 18th. We have payable warrants uh, 1821S, 1821, 1821V, and payroll 1821. We have um, a list of license renewals for 2018. Um, and the select board has a list in front of us for that, as long as a common VIC license for Pride. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes and the warrants for tonight's meeting. Um, on the license renewals, we have um, a couple that we were, do you want to take those separately? Yeah, um, uh, people feel comfortable voting on the first two and then uh, pick apart the licenses a little bit? I do. Okay, so motion. Motion to do the first two. Okay, all in favor of approving the uh, first two items? Aye. Aye. I'm going to abstain because I wasn't at those meetings for the. Uh, oh, right. Okay, we start. Past agendas. Yeah, <clears throat> so, yeah, I think there are just a couple of them on here. Um, so, Steve Lewis Subaru is actually here tonight. And we're going to be having a conversation for a scheduled appointment. Okay. So, that we could just hold off on that until. We have that discussion. Um, Jennifer, you said that um, you've been having difficulty getting uh, information from NAMCO? Yes. Is that right? Yes, it's the arcade at the mall timeout. Mm -hmm. um, they do not have a business certificate. And uh, based on policy we're enforcing this year, you have to have your business certificate uh, to have your license renewed. How so have we tried to notify them? Um, I've called them twice. I've left messages. Um, they did return their document and their renewal, all of their renewal forms and a check. It's just they're missing this business certificate. But I, I did build in the 13th to, to help people. Um, since we've never asked for the business certificate before, I've built in the 13th for the renewals as well, just to help everybody get them and get on board. Um, I'm hoping that I will hear back from them within the next two days. And then, um, if not Monday, I'll be going to the arcade to speak to their manager. Okay. Um, and then Pride, so Pride, we have a common bit license that's separate. Um, that's new. And then we also have the beer and wine license that was granted um, along with the original construction, right? So, I mean, at this point, um, David, we were talking a little bit, in terms of the beer and wine license, there haven't been any infractions because they're not even open yet. Correct. Okay. Correct. So uh, I got one more comment on sure. these. Uh, again, well, as I said before, <coughs> the grease, uh, grease trap schedules and inspections that need to be addressed in our rules and regulations, you just had another issue today uh, with another one of these uh, businesses, whether it's the property owner or the business itself, I think it needs to be addressed at some point in the sewer regulations. 
actually, so you're not you're not um, suggesting it affect the approval tonight no, for the property, no, but you just no. But I had brought it up two past meetings, I believe. Are they habitual offenders? No. Okay. Just just, no. just periodically here and there, they they tend to not clean their grease traps in an appropriate manner, and they end up getting plugged up. Mm -hmm. um, this particular one hasn't made it to the town sewer mains, but a few of the other ones have. So. Mm -hmm. And Marlo, is that something that I know you? The Irish working on. Working on okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. Our goals and objectives for this year is, is reviewing all the, the water and sewer regulations, and John and I have had discussions on it. Mm -hmm. so yes, mm -hmm. that's part of. We have had other people though in the past that were somewhat of offenders. Has that been yeah. rectified? That's doing much better. Mo most of them, yeah, have a regular schedule. Okay. We did add to the letter for the renewal. <coughs> if you had any outstanding balances with the town, that, that y'all would not renew their licenses, and that's been very effective. We started it last year, and this year everybody who's on that list is in good standing with the town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not in the sewer regulations right now, but okay. a, quarter, a quarterly inspection we recommend on some of, <coughs> some of the higher grease output of some of these businesses. So there's other ones that do only clean it twice a year, spring and fall, which is acceptable. I mean, but, but we need to, to get a standard in writing so everybody understands where we're at with it. So with Pride, we've got a situation where we're still under construction, and there have been you know some ongoing issues um but it seems like they're being worked through right so but is david is there a way for us to um i know the approval has to happen by the end of the year and we only have one other meeting is there a way for us to um approve these licenses but then then hold them until they right, have all that, of their other obligations that, that is a, that's a choice that the board can make you're right you need to you, you need particularly with the respect to the liquor license you need to be able to document to the commonwealth that you've renewed the license or failed to review renew the license by december 31st um, so you can renew the license but then you can hold the license pending the completion successful completion of the of the uh, the structure with an issue and some of the certificate of arguments would, would be the thing that I would be looking for. We were here too, not too long ago and we had some issues and I, I'm going to assume those issues have been resolved, satisfactory resolved. There was a communication problem that was going to be resolved we because we now had a new contact that we were going to be working with. It's still ongoing. Uh, I mean, we are, all the inspectors are putting in more time on this project than most, uh, but we are having cooperation, continuous cooperation, okay. which is a good thing. Good. So, good. I must say, on site, the gentleman that is in charge there that I am in contact with is extremely professional. He is trying to do his utmost best, and uh, I have, as you saw in my last email, I'm trying to get him to have more input in calling us specifically for those inspections rather than going up the chain a little bit further. And I think that's where the problem has um, aspirated this whole issue with um, uh, making sure we have timely inspections on certain things. So right now, everything's on a good pace. So I'm hopeful that it stays on that pace. Okay. And um, the common Vic, couldn't that be handled the same way? Same so, way. So, okay. I mean, I, that, that would be my preference unless people just want to let it go through, but I think just until we have a little bit more track record here, it would probably be good for us to have some opportunity to right, yeah, it's fine. hold everybody accountable. And again, with the expectation that it's going to be fine. So. Okay. Make a motion to accept the licenses as is, uh, except for Steve Lewis, we will do later. NAPCO, we will hold on until they uh, do you want to do a contingency on that? Um, I think we just hold on just the vote for on both. Because okay. we can, you're going to have a cleanup round next week? Yes. Oh, okay. So yeah. Hold on that. And uh, on the pride uh, approval for. Um, the one license that we've already approved and wait for the second one. Or is it? No, we're, I'm doing 
oh, pr approving both, but we're holding, holding them subject to approval, approval for their certificate of occupancy. Second. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, so that's it for the consent agenda. We have a scheduled appointment at, is that what you guys were here for? Yeah, the yeah. new license. Then. Can I just make an inquiry just in terms of for the common deck? Again, James Channing for Pride. So yep. we, we applied yep. for one common victory for the whole establishment, but there also will be a subway that's located in there as well. So I don't know if the town, I can tell you, some cities and towns prefer us to have two separate common vic, one for the subway, one for uh -huh. the store. What would be the non-subway common vic? What would that cover? The, the cafe, bakery type, the food service, like the hot dogs and the soup and the other. Exactly. You know, so we probably need to have the two. <coughs> All right, then I'll submit that second one. Okay. Like I just said. The right. other ones are separate. The one at Walmart is separate, and the one at the mall is separate. Okay. Be consistent. Be consistent. Then. All right. Yeah, good question. Thank what, you. What else is going in there? So we have Pride. We have a, a um, Subway. What else? Is anything else going in? We have the, the liquor store. We will have yeah. our, our food area where we have just standard, you know, coffee, donuts, um, we have a, we'll have a deli case in there where we'll slice meats and cheeses, mm -hmm. uh, a small grill to do breakfast sandwiches. Is there any seating? No Dunkin' Donuts. Seating? Yes. No. Right. So no. there's no, no Dunkin' Donuts. No no Dunkin Donuts. No. We're not going to get our sixth one on the road Yeah. Our yeah. 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 coffee's better. Not that Dunkin' Donuts isn't good. Yeah. Our coffee is not that dunkin donuts is not good yeah are how about, are you selling propane gas from there? No. No. I think the the propane exchange is something that's been contemplated, but I don't know if it's been approved yet. I know, I kind of heard that somewhere in my mind. I don't know where that came up, but is that well, there's a propane tank propane on site tank. for um, food for heating and everything else that they need, but right now there's okay. propane. For we're fighting hard to get gas on the road, but we're not having any luck, so I'm sorry. Not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. Thank, right. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so we have a scheduled hearing at 7:15, but we've got a few minutes, and there was a request made to take the Lake Warner. Is it Lake Warner Dam that requires the notarization? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. David, you want to take that? All right. So the Lake Warner Dam, and uh, they originally voted back in uh, 2014 to support the project with $100,000 that came from the Community Preservation Act funds. It was uh, addressed by town meeting and approved. We're in the process of spending those funds in order to complete the project. We have about $15,000 that we have not spent, $85,000 that we have. Um, in order for a private entity to receive CPA funds, they need to um, grant to the town of Hadley a historic preservation restriction. The his purpose of the historic preservation restriction is to make sure that the structure that is being supported with public dollars remains a historic structure. So for example, the church next door received um, uh, money from CPA. They needed to enter into historic preservation <coughs> restriction so that the church always remains as a church. Uh, for here, they have to certify, they have to uh, enter into a restriction agreement that the dam is going to remain as a dam, which is an easy call to make. So <laughs> this, uh, this involves no money on the part of the town other than the original appropriation of the uh, 100000 It does not obligate the town for any future repairs or any liability. Uh, and it does not uh, convey ownership or rights in the dam to the town of Hadley. Simply a historic preservation restriction. Uh, we're not going to we're not going to see them turn it into a car wash or something like that. It's going to stay a, a dam. Who's responsible um, in reading the uh, paperwork on this? They had something about making sure that they have insurance for this. Who's responsible for doing that? They are responsible for maintaining the insurance. Like the Friends of Lake Warner. With the Friends of Lake Warner. On the dam. On the dam. And has this um, document been approved by our lawyers? Yes, so the original historic preservation restriction was approved by uh, Rick Holland of KP Law. It took a couple of years for this to bounce around. 
So just the other day, I sent it over to Joel Bard of KP Law. He reviewed it and gave me the verbal okay this afternoon. Okay. Anything else? Motion signed. Motion made. Is there a second? Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Hey, All right, so you need us to. There are two copies. Yeah. Yes. And you each night need to sign each of them where it says yes. select board. Good. And then I'll, I'll finish it up in the next room with a no notarize your signatures as long as I've witnessed them. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank you. Two pages? Mm -hmm. uh, no. your book or anything or and being business friendly, we'll give them a couple of extra minutes. Uh, I'm yeah, just going to say, can we do the um, Hynoski property closing documents, David? Sure. Do those need authorization too or no? Just signatures. I think that. Do those need to be notarized as well? No. So there are two items of business to do here. The first is, is that we have a closing that's uh, scheduled for December 14th. Uh, in order for us to get to the closing, we need these documents signed tonight. The first is to quit claim deed and the attachments um, and, and a check for $380,000, which uh, I've processed through the, the account. Uh, so that's the first part of this. The second part is a request from Mr. Sykowski, who had an agreement to farm the land and use the barn. Had two different agreements uh, for uh, use of the land, use of the barn. I've put in copies of those agreements. He's asked that this, these agreements continue until next August uh, or July. Uh, if you think about the development of that project, uh, we're not going to be breaking ground until July uh, or August or September of next year anyways. So the property is going to remain unutilized by anyone until we have a town meeting vote at the annual town meeting to raise the additional funds for the um, fire substation or some other other uh, use of the property. So by the time you go through the bid documents and the design, you're not you're talking about a date that's beyond next growing season. Do we have two agreements here or just the one? There should be two agreements. Plainville Farm was the first one up the one. Yeah, so if you look at the top the top of the page it says agreement, yeah. then there's uh, then there's signatures and then the uh, the next agreement starts below the first set of signatures. Oh, okay. This part I'm missing. Are there lease agreements? <coughs> I mean, I have no issue with, uh, I have no issue you with. know, 
Sikowski continuing to anybody have any questions or concerns about that? Is there, is there any chance no. you want to run it by the committee before we do? Before our is there a fee? What committee? Choices. The, the oh, oh, the North Hadley. Yeah. 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 Choices, do you feel any need to run this by the North Hadley yeah. by committee in yes, advance so. of? So there's a $600 fee that we would collect from him? I don't see what. 840. Don't 840. $840. Well, there's two fees. Two fees. 100 for down payments and 40. 840 for one and 600 for the other. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think that the committee would object to it. Based on the recommendation, I would uh, I would say that we should execute this with uh, Mr. Sikowski. Second. Okay. And do we just need one vote or do you want to take them separately? We could take them separately, and what I'll do is I'll communicate to our attorney mm -hmm. that the lease agreements are agreeable, and that uh, we'll uh, we'll have formal documents for you to sign at your next meeting. Okay. So motion made and seconded for continuation of the leasing arrangements. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Okay. And then you also need a vote to move forward <coughs> with the signing of the legal documents. Yes, please. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Do you have the agreements with you tonight? They're right there. Uh, I've got tax classification. <coughs> for sure. I don't have point asking closing. Okay. So this is just for me to sign? It looks like chair, chair, chair. There's one place for the board one and for the there's board. like five places for the chair. Okay. See that one over here? Let's start it. Okay. Think. I think they just came. They just arrived? Okay. It's just a one page down, I think. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, in the uh, spirit of time, I'll, I'll catch my signatures at the end, Jeff Rekha. Okay. Okay. So, I'm um, going back to Steve Lewis Subaru. I apologize that we're late. I thought we were at the senior center. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was my bad. That's on me. Okay, and so who do we have with us tonight? Hi, I'm Joe Clark, General Manager of Steve Lewis Subaru. Joe, okay. Yeah. Tracy Stearns. Joe and Tracy, okay. Yes. Um, so the reason that we had invited you in, I just wanted to <coughs> recap a couple of things. Um, one is just so you know that the uh, we did the licensing as part of the consent agenda, and we just pulled yours from it, just pending the discussion here. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's just off to the side at the moment. Um, so the reason that we wanted to have you come in is that looking back at kind of the history of the um, plan for the cars, that there was a site plan that was approved by the planning board, um, and back in December of 2016, there was a re request for continued parking of excess automobiles. And yeah. It seemed like it was going to be a temporary situation, and then you asked the board to approve an extension of that. Um, so that's been happening. Uh, over at uh, Pulse, right? Yeah. Pulse, yeah. okay. Um, on the Pulse property. <clears throat> but when we took that vote, we were clear that we wanted the cars removed uh, based on the um, facts that were relayed to us was that there was an over delivery from the dealer and they don't always honor the dealer floor plan and all of that stuff. And so that you kind of got stuck with extra cars, but you were systematically whittling them down. Yes. And in April, they would all be gone and back on the property, and that would be open again. Yeah. What happened? Yeah, so it didn't That's, happen. So. Yes. So, so a magical thing happened. Well, we hired a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, what originally happened with us is that we had to request for the additional inventory. We were in the process of potentially purchasing a lot next door. Um, and as some of you may or may not be aware of, that deal fell through for us. Um, Subaru, with help from Subaru, they were ramping up our inventory to help us fund 
that project and also provide the extra inventory that happens with that. Uh, ultimately, what ended up happening was they gave us a lot of extra cars in addition to what their, their larger allocations as well, as well. So not just were they giving us a larger allocation, but they were also helped pump inventory into us to help us get our numbers up to support the larger facility that we were going to soon have. Mm -hmm. uh, that deal fell through at the time when we had made the request with you guys. And again, we're very sorry for that. Our, our hopes were that that process was going to go through. We built a park cars in our own facility. We were going to meet with the board to have our license expanded, uh, expanded as well. Uh, unfortunately, everything fell apart as far as in that part of things goes. Now, what ended up happening with the extra inventory that they, they gave us, we sold them and we kept selling them. And what happens with that is that it, as you, the more you sell, the more you earn from Subaru. So our allocations each month kept growing and growing. So what happened with, where we normally would be able to whittle that back down, we actually went the other direction. Um, we've been able to continually increase sales as well, but unfortunately, our plan for next door fell through. So here we are, and again, we're very sorry because that our expansion and our original plans, what we had in mind, <clears throat> was to have that be a short-term solution for our long-term fix that we had that didn't work. Mm -hmm. So now we have a larger inventory which we're going to continue to earn. It's going to get the next few months. It seems as though it's going to continue to get uh, continue to grow as well. Uh, so we're at the point now where we're asking you guys for forgiveness for what happened, but more importantly, hoping that we can, you know, that you guys can allow us to increase. Um, or not increase, but continue the relationship that we have going on with Pulse now to continue that parking for us. We do not retail any cars out of that lot at all. There's, if there's a customer there, it's by accident, or it's one of Pulse's customers that's there. We, we bring everybody back up, with, you know, everyone that's to the store. Um, and, uh, but through that process, it's been able to allow us to do some great things as well. You know, we've been able to expand the staff. You know, we've, we've added more jobs in the dealership as well. Um, so it's, it's really created some great things for us as a dealership. But I know that goes against what we originally had asked you guys for permission for, and for that we are truly well, can sorry. Can I just ask, I mean, so this expired April 15th of 2017. It's December 6th. Yep. So what effort at communicating with town hall and town, uh, to appropriate town personnel have you made? Have you reached out to the town administrator, the planning board, the select board? Why did we have to basically demand you come in? I don't have a good answer for you for that. For that, I'm sorry. <coughs> but that's why I'm happy. You know, when when uh, we were invited to this meeting, I looked at this as an opportunity to ask for that um, opportunity to expand our for the planning board for our license. You'll have to forgive me. I don't know the technical part of that works, but this opportunity, we looked at this as a chance to to try to do the right thing, to continue to do the right thing. I think at the time, some of us really didn't <coughs> feel that you know a few cars were a big issue. Right. But you were told that you were going to leave the cars there to go through the permitting cycle and go see the proper authorities in the town and get a permit for it because you were not permitted for those vehicles there. And I mean, if, they, if the company just delivered your cars, you can give them my address. I could use a few of them my house, you know. If they just <laughs> delivered them, that, that, that was the understanding. The, the company <laughs> delivered them to us. We didn't order them. And now the whole story is. <laughs> <laughs> So, but but the, the reality is that, you know, obviously with the more cars that we are able to put on the road, um, the larger our, you know, service inventory increases. That includes parking, you know, those service cars. I that look at it the employees that we, you know, increased on that, we've more than doubled our force, you know, in terms of what we're selling and what we're putting on the road and what we're servicing. And, you know, there's, there, there's, um, there's. You have your jobs. We have ours, and we're we're thinking about what do we have to do? What are we doing on this day? We're not necessarily thinking about. I think your grace about, period is way overdue here. And and, yes. and and you know, and, and as Joe said, that's we apologize mm -hmm. for that. That's not that's not for a lack of respect of what you do. It's it's for, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, we're reacting to how we have to react in terms of what we have and what we're doing. We've outgrown our space. We're, we're doing the best that we can to provide a service for, you know, uh, our community and, and, you know, we're increasing our work, you know, workforce where, we, you know, employees have to park someplace. There's all of these things to Tracy, I think, I mean, I think we're all more than happy to stipulate that 
Of course we want your business to be successful. And a successful business in Hadley is only good for the town of Hadley for all of the reasons that you stated. Of course we want people to be employed. Of course we want you to be able to sell more cars. People pay excise tax. I mean, that's all well and good. But you have to follow the rules. So, I mean, successful businesses can't just kind of, you know, say, oh, well, you know, we don't, we're not going to bother to go back to planning board when other people have gone back to planning board. So, I mean, at, at this point, the, the reason say, for that happening is, is a, it's, a, it's a terrible reason, and it's a reason that I, I'm, I'm embarrassed to actually give you. But the, uh, you know, Steve Lewis and, and myself, you know, I run the day-to-day -day operations, and I run everything that happens. And there was a poor communication between Steve and I as far as what was allowed, what wasn't allowed. And, and, and for me, handling the day-to-day -day operations, I was, believe it or not, until I had someone in the lot counting the cars that we had, was under the impression that we were okay. And that's not an excuse, and I don't expect you guys to accept that, but that's the reality that I live in, and that's the responsibility that I have to now try to fix that mm -hmm. um, as well. You know, Steve is, you know, was um, an absentee owner, and, and he's in Florida, and that's where he'll be for the, you know, for the entire winter. Mm -hmm. And so now I looked at this as an opportunity. He had to a pretty tough to, summer, too. He, he did had a very rough summer. Yeah. You know, and in, and in fairness to Steve, I will say he had three car accidents in four months, uh, and one of which almost killed him. Uh, so How are we going to fix it? <coughs> Stop yeah, from driving. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> That's the easy one. That's the easy one. So I think, I think uh, there was a process that was started with the planning board in order to change the use of that lot, and I think we just need to pick that thread up again. And yes. Follow through that that to its uh, conclusion, and then come back to the select board and apply for an alteration of the class one license. Correct. Uh, and get the appropriate cards uh, uh, level, and I, th I think we could work it out that way. Can we put some sort of a deadline on it? My understanding, and again, this is through you know Steve's attorney, who I'm trying not to utilize for you guys. I, I, you guys deserve a better than that opportunity. But um, my understanding is that that the planning board meets in the spring, and that at that time we could plan. They board. meet every other every other week. week. Not, I'm sorry, not the, then for the licensing. But the understanding that I'm under, and again, please educate me if I'm wrong. But my understanding is in the springtime that there's an opportunity at that time to amend our license. No, any time. At any time. Okay. Jennifer, right behind you. Yeah, hey. Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got to know Jennifer. Uh, <laughs> She's there every day, Monday yeah. through Friday. Okay, so, so please, I, I'm obviously, in, I obviously do not know the proper channels to get this done. I started by calling Boston, and they told me to get lost. Uh, so I realized it was a local. Thing. You have to but, yes. Right, so and I think I think a conversation with Tim uh, and getting in front of the planning board. They're meeting next Tuesday, is it? Mm -hmm. We two, two Tuesdays. We two Tuesdays. Yeah. 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 Uh, so two Tuesdays. We'll get together and uh, get him through that process immediately. I think it should be a the, time the frame. The 19th, they're meeting. Yeah. Because technically your license is up December 31st. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. 19th. Right. Okay. Planning board is the 19th. Okay. Well, I can't see your shining face on TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The 19th, I don't know how busy the schedule is. We would be bringing what? Yeah. Well, that's going to just time out for a second. Yeah. yeah. So, with the planning board, we, we can't control the planning board schedule either, and they have to request to be sure. on the agenda to Jerry's point at the end of the year. There's a lot of things that they're trying to go through. Can we grant a conditional license yes, with a deadline? Yes, but there is a window on the planning board, the 15 minutes at the start of the meeting, mm -hmm. that new people go in and present their project, and then they will direct you on when and put you on the agenda for another meeting. So mm -hmm. your responsibility is to get in there on the 19th yep. at 7 o'clock and get on their agenda, sign up on their little desk there. Yes. And, and then it is at the seniors. I was going to say, and <laughs> I know that. We were there a quarter of <laughs> well, All due respect, they may, they may have an opening. So I mean, if, yeah. if they can okay. get it done right. for, yeah. for two weeks from now, and I'm yeah. not sure if you I can I just want to be reasonable on the time frame. <clears throat> right. yeah. So, the property that we're talking about is not owned by the Pulse folks, it's owned by somebody else. They're a third person. Very round. Yeah. Well, it is the same yeah, ownership. It is the same, same entity, but it is yeah. under Ted Kroger. Another LLC. Another right. LLC. The gentleman from Maine is the. Yes, Ted Kroger. So, there might, be, there might be a little bit of legal complications right. to work through. So, I would give them enough time. I think that's, that's uh, an appropriate amount of time. 
Just December, January. So basically by the end of February. So yeah. what, what what would they be expected to bring to the table? I'll get you through that. Talk to talk okay. to okay. Tim. Well, okay. I'll bring you. I, can, I can be helpful for what Tim tells you. You can mm -hmm. take to the bank. Okay. Okay. So okay. easiest to be there on the 19th. Talk to Tim. Yeah. yeah okay. Just to, yeah. Just talk, we'll to, talk Tim to Tim, and Tim will walk you through. Okay. And just for future, I mean, hitting the ignore button and kind of hoping it goes away is usually not a good strategy. And we don't bite. Yeah. yeah. Reasonably yeah. friendly. And the average. So we're actually very happy to get involved. The advertisements at 5:30 in the morning really gets you. You know, this well, that way too long. long. We, we like businesses and Hadley, so yes. we're, we're just trying to be your friends and have you do the right thing. And Steve Lewis Subaru has been an excellent, excellent um, company. Company to work Hadley. with in the town of Hadley, and we love having you here. Thank you Just very much. please, let's work within the system. Yeah. Because the next dealership down the road says, how come you let Lewis do it? Right. And that's our problem, so we got to fix this. Yeah. Please help yeah. us. Well, the one thing I can promise you guys is that communication from this point forward will be through me directly. Um, and again, they're being there every day and being involved in the day-to-day -day operation, I understand what you guys have for needs and, and what needs to be done. So that makes it easier going forward. Um, okay. Okay. So David, do we need to take a, um, vote, on the a vote on the license then? And yeah. So c conditional. Um, All right, we'll grant your uh, class two. Class one, class one, class one license uh, condition that all um, of the uh, rules are met um, for a three-month period. A three-month period by the end of February. Second. Is there anything that we have to provide between now and then? You're going to yeah. talk yeah. to Tim. Tim, Tim call Tim tomorrow morning. Okay. No, I'll take him over. I'll take him over now. He's going to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay. going to work you down. So Thank you. Thank you. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Guys. Thank you. Um, I brought some dog toys. Dog toys? Yes. We got some super dog because, toys. Because, yeah, <laughs> no, we're, right now we're, we're in the share the love. We're working with the daycare. So <laughs> I brought some dog toys. Share them. <laughs> thank you. Hi. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. This will be my daughter. Christmas. Yeah. Yes, you have to sign all of those. Yeah, but there's no signature block here. Do I just sign, sign it? Just sign anywhere, okay. Okay, so 7.30 we have our next appointment. Oh, this is a good one. Tax classification hearing. Dan? Hello. Hi. It's <laughs> just like we just went over the I'll make this fairly quick. Uh, each year you've got to go for different options, and I'll briefly touch on each of those. Uh, the first is the allocation of the tax levy, whether to have a split rate. If we have a single rate for fiscal 18, it will be $12.09. If you were to shift it to the maximum 150%, the residential rate would drop to $8.89, the commercial rate would go to $18.14. At 1209, the average residential property will pay $3,884. If you shifted it to full 50%, that would drop to 2856 And the a commercial property assessed at the average residential value, which is 321300 would go from 3884 to 5828 And before you go any further, this takes into consideration, because that was a big question from people, this takes in the new assessments, correct? This is the new assessments and the $95 oh override that okay. is going on for this year. Uh, on our report on page four, there's five properties, four commercial and four residential properties. These are the same properties that we've used probably the last 20 years. Um, the values have changed on some of them, and this chart shows what a 10% jump would do. It's basically they're going to it's real examples rather than just taking the average. Um, the commercial values dipped a little bit this year. We went from 34.99% to 34.64% of our total, but we're within the our normal range for the last 10 or so years. Yeah, were they just particular commercial properties or were they across the board? I mean, was it more like the um, big box or? The big box came down more 
the, the smaller stuff we didn't see a huge drop. It went up probably about two percent, mm -hmm. but that was offset by by uh, reductions in the larger stores. Okay. The second option is the open space discount, and we basically don't have anything classified as open space. In 2002, DOR had recommended that we shift the few parcels we had from open space out. This would be an option if you went with a split rate, you could stick chapter land in here. So that the chapter only parcels would would be able to get a discount of up to 25% from the, the ship. The residential exemption is the third option, and that is where you can shift 35% of the average residential value, or exempt 35% from all owner-occupied dwellings. The average value, average residential value, this is not just houses, but includes land, is just over 295,000. So each house will get a reduction of 103,000 off of their value. Because it doesn't shift levy out of the residential class, any house that's assessed at $395,000 would pay more in taxes. So it shifts the tax burden to higher assessed homes. And because of that, the tax rate would, that would have been 1209 would jump to $16.38 for residential. And an owner-occupied house without an exemption would pay $38.84. If you were to shift it, the full 35% exemption, they would drop $315, while a non-owner-occupied house would go up by almost $1,400. The final option is the small commercial exemption. And that is you can grant up to a 10% reduction on small commercial properties. And the definition of small commercial property is anything that has less than a million dollar assessment and fewer than 10 annualized employees. The report we get from Department of Employment, there are 52 properties in town that would qualify for that. And like the residential exemption, that tax dollars would be shifted within the commercial class. So the tax rate would go from 1209 to 1216. Uh, how about temporary help in the summer for the farmers? Would that be under this category? Uh, it's annualized employees. So if they've got 30 people for six months, six months, they would not qualify. Uh, the last page of the report, I've got this is a little different than in prior years. Uh, it's 10 communities in Western Mass, mostly Canada and Hampshire counties. What their average value is for last year, what their average tax bill was for last year, <coughs> and the tax rates and the percentages of residential and open versus commercial, industrial, and personal. And there's five communities that have a split rate and five communities that do not. And they're, they're ranked by their, their, the amount of the average single family tax bill. And the assessors have voted or uh, are recommending that a single factor of one be adopted for fiscal 2018, which would keep a single rate, that no open space discount be granted, that no residential exemption be granted, and no small commercial exemption be granted at this point. And just for the record, too, in case everybody didn't see their email, the uh, planning board also discussed yeah. this last night <coughs> and, they and wanted, wanted to make sure that they... They were not a single rate also. Yeah, that they, they were recommending a single rate and uh, supported their position as well. Okay. Any <coughs> questions, comments for Dan or anybody else? I've been watching the news and I've been watching Greenfield and I've been watching a few other communities with their, they're bouncing back and forth and, and right from the beginning actually I went to talk to a lot of businesses and the, the, mid, the middle road is, is the problem and I don't think we really have that, that kind of determination of what we're going to do with the small businesses at this point, you know. The big boxes probably can afford a little bit. I don't know, maybe not. But it, it just, I, I'm, 
I went to single rate right now. What's the middle of the road that you talk in the middle of the road? Are you talking? Well, he put a dollar figure on employees like for the farms. You know, if you did, if a farm has 30 people working, well, you know, and and their their dollar figure is a little high, and you, you know they got to pay that higher tax rate. Some people say yes, they're a business. Other people say they're still a farm. They can't plant any more crops. You know. And, and, and there's only so many rows in the field, you know. Don't you think in actuality that um, even though, and I think you talked about it, whether or not you shift it to business or just or to the homeowners, it's still going to be the same amount of money that we're going to get in. It's not yeah, it won't, it won't bring in any additional revenue anything, unless anything extra. You couple it with. And I think we talked about right. it with finance that mm -hmm. we were thinking, well, maybe then the taxpayer would. Uh, be more amenable to uh, an increase in their taxes if they were at a lower rate. If we had shifted to business, I think we had that discussion with the finance committee at one point too. But that would be a future. That would be a future, future discussion, not, not yeah. this year. I just want to take the fear factor out with anybody talking about changing the rates, anyways. I'm not under any circumstance would I go for a max as far as or would I personally support a max indication there. I mean, if somebody wanted to talk the difference as to whether or not there was a 10%, uh, and you provided us with the numbers here, and I appreciate that, but if it was to go to 10% more burden be put on the, the businesses, you're talking about 1330 versus 1209. You're not talking about 18. So it's a slight increase. And the taxpayer, uh, the homeowner, would go from 1209 to 1145 so it's not a tremendous savings on the other end either it's just a redistribution as to how that would go and that was certainly more in line with with any of the thought process that I had rather than looking at a max increase or anything like that I Greenfield went when yeah when I looked at the Greenfield yeah. number I thought I thought it was a joke I yeah. mean I just and my brother owns a business in Greenfield and he just he was like flabbergasted so that was that was that was just kind of off the wall, and I think that was that was destined for a problem. That thank goodness they didn't do it appropriately, and it didn't it, it wasn't able to be reviewed anyways. But it will be up again, and it will be discussed again. Mm -hmm. uh, has anyone um, done a study of the consequences of these kinds of, of uh, split taxes? Because that would be important, I would think, to have some kind of an idea. You know, to look at other towns that have done this and see what kind of impact it's had. We're being we offset. Yeah, like yeah we're being offset now, technically, by our business and industrial areas. So if that stops, you know, we're we're going to be further further down the road here in a couple of years. We're going to be in worse shape than we are now. You know? I think to that point, Valerie, which is why I, I certainly don't get a sense of. Here, we haven't voted yet, but this would be a significant change for Hadley. And so I would think that um, to the extent we, and, and the only time this has come up is in the context of possibly coupling it with the potential override, um, there would be a lot more work to do, exactly what you're saying. And there was no way that we were going to accomplish that, certainly by this session so it seems to me that from an operational standpoint and from a planning standpoint we stay the course and then maybe we fully vet and go one way or the other ultimately on, on a future conversation but, but there would be a lot of work to be done like John's talking about looking at all of these exemptions and the like. <coughs> Anybody have any more questions or? We'll make a motion to keep the tax rate at a single Right. And the other three. Oh, the other three. Could uh, accept the recommendations of the assessors. Assessors. I will second it. Second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Thank okay. you for all the work. Please pass along to the assessors. So we'll thank their hard work. So we have Dr. Vance sign, right? Oh, yep, 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 yep. And this is everybody? Yes, please. Yes. And we have a 745 hearing. We're a little late for that. Not too bad. And that is our tree hearing.
Hey, hey, uh, tree hugger. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, given you all a list of trees. There's 11 trees on the, on the list that I'm, I'm seeking permission to cut down and remove. Uh, ten, over, ten of them are various species of maple, one's a pine. Um, they all have varying degrees of, of decay. And, uh, most of them have been trimmed to the point where they no longer have foliage on them. Uh, and a few of them are reaching the point of where you know, they need to immediately be taken down. Um, that's a generalization of the 11 trees. If, if you have any other questions on that, then I'd be happy to take it. So moved. Second. Uh, <laughs> question <laughs> <laughs> for discussion. No, no, no. Yeah. Second for discussion. discussion with Marlo first, and I did just before Second. I left work. Second. Stumps. We still got a big issue. We need to either have them grown or buy a grinder to get rid of them. They're doing tons of damage to the town equipment. And, uh, you know, it's just been gone on too long. They need to be removed. Some way, somehow. And, you know, last year he gave, he gave back X amount of dollars that he probably could have bought, you know, that grinder with that kind of money. You're are you talking about the sidewalk, Kim Jack? Uh, sidewalk and there's trees on the side of the roads, on the corner of uh, intersections. There, there's well, don't there's a lot. Them on the corner of the intersections. Well, we're spending, listen, we're spending time in the wintertime to put posts up by tree stumps so we don't hit them. I make a recommendation that we ask Marla to look into this and bring us uh, a proposal whether or not we rent it, borrow one, or figure out what we uh, do. A quick comment on it. John and I have talked about it, and, and there's been some ongoing uh, talk about it. Um, I need to set up another um, meeting with the, uh, the Shade Tree Committee because we, we discussed many of these items when we had a meeting way back when, but everybody's been so busy we haven't had time to reconvene um, to come up with a plan for at least the ones along the, the taxpayers' driveways that they're hitting with their own snow plows uh, and, and our equipment. Uh, we do have an excessive amount of stumps out there. It does dry in, you know, other uh, other diseases for the trees next to it. Uh, they make a short story out of it. I don't want to turn it into a long story, but it is something that I'm looking at working on. It's on the list. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm sure we hear more about that, especially during the budget process. So motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. <laughs> 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 Lob grenade and abstain. <laughs> well, if you really want my opinion, I think you heard it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've got a funny story to tell you about that. When we had a tree taken down in the front of my house and I hired a stump grinder that hasn't taken out, so I didn't have to bump into it myself. And uh, there was a call made to David at Town Hall and said, how in the name of God does a selectman get his stumps ground and nobody else can in this town? <laughs> And uh, I, I know, know that, um, it, it was Joe, Re Joe Rivers made the phone call, and he was the eagle in the house next to him. Um, God rest his soul. And uh, I said, it's easy to pay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as they rot, various things can happen, too. Uh, larger sinkholes can develop. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's just so many things we can talk about when it comes to that, believe it or not. So. Mm -hmm. But not tonight. But not tonight. tonight. Thank you, Marlon. Okay. It's a senior center and library construction update. Go home. Uh, uh, senior Senator progressing. I will I'll make the recommendation or I'll just notify you. We had a, another meeting almost immediately after the vote uh, and it, everything is progressing. You um, And I know that the Senior Center and the library folks have been talking. Um, so there seems to be some cooperation going on there in terms of sharing of information. I have library has a, um, I think they have a little celebration going on tonight so they're, they're not able to be here. But, uh, and we definitely need to put on the agenda to address Channel 5 and being planned. Yep, and that was discussed at the department head meeting today, too. Um, transition plan, and Tim also uh, brought up the municipal building committee. So we should probably try to find some time on the uh, an upcoming agenda to devote a little bit more. Focus. Truly, the time frame is over a year out on that. You know that. I, I understand okay. that, but right. now we need to make a decision not a week before they're ready to knock the place down. Okay. Okay, so David, can we do that maybe, maybe not the 13th, but maybe January? I think you guys are meeting soon, right? Yeah, we're meeting the 11th. The 11th, okay, all right. So cool. I'll bring that up. Municipal building committee. Yeah, Tuesday night. Yeah. So we'll talk about that. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs>
Yeah, Tim, do you have anything before you go? No. Okay, you had a good um, follow-up? You had a good follow-up with the folks Yeah, they're okay. going to go around at their next meeting. I would, I would request from the board, and I think everybody will agree up here, if there's more things that we need to understand with regards to what's going over our pride, um, we need to get that resolved at the next meeting, one way or the other, because we are running out of time to help you get everything done the right way. I'm just Jeremy, so you know, yeah. and just so you know, it's just an endemic problem with them mm -hmm. uh, at the top and not being able to allow the people that are in the trenches to do what they're supposed to be doing in the daily basis. So it does take, you. unfortunately for us, we're spending a lot of time making sure on a daily basis to go over there. And you know, I brought up the thing with the um, uh, grease trap and then John was able to get over there. Fortunately, they did stop burying it and he, he found something wrong with it. No, and then they got back, Mr. Bolick and decided to leave everything because it was within code, but in the near future you'll be having problems with it. So. Yeah, and that's that's the problem. Even though the, the, the site guys manager there want to do yeah. it right, they understand what those issues the are. The site manager agreed with all my recommendations and called me back a few hours later and said no they're not sorry you can't do it. And I've yeah, gotten that too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, uh, the fences are wrong for OSHA compliance. Yeah, we'll change them. Nope, sorry, Tim. He says no. Because, in you his, know, it's almost to the point where. Just, he, yeah, the the next Wednesday, we're going to sit here yeah. again, and we're going to either be able to help you fix this stuff or not. So, the more information you get to us and the right people are here, the more we're going to be able to help you. Put a date on it, and if, it's, if he's still not complying, then. Well, the vote that we took tonight, we've conditioned where we've approved the licensing, yeah. but we're holding it until at any time, Tim and Mike and yeah. Marlo. Oh, at any time, and everybody else is yeah. 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 At any time, we can pull it and make it reapply for it. Mm -hmm. And he needs to understand that. Yeah. All right, so you all set? Yep, I'm okay. all set. Thank right. you very Thank much you for your time. Too. Okay, so we have an update from the ambulance subcommittee. Um, so Joyce and I are on that committee, and uh, you want me to recap? You want to recap? You can, if you want. I don't care. I'm a little okay. concerned with how much information we're going to talk about that, or whether it should be done in executive session. If there's going to be a negotiation down the road with them or someone else, whether or not any of this information should be relate now or whether it should not be yeah it's all it's all a matter of public record now. i know yeah, yeah but, but yeah we we're going to hit the fifteen thousand foot view for okay that all right okay um so basically where we're at we uh, as everybody knows we put out the rfp we wound up extending the rfp because we were uh, and put on an addendum because there were some questions coming back from potential bidders that made it sound like there was some confusion um, and then with the allowance of extra time, we had one formal bid submitted. Uh, and then we had two uh, entities indicating that they were interested, but not, <coughs> not now. So uh, the one bidder was Action EMS, and the <coughs> subcommittee invited them in on Monday night. We spent uh, about an hour or so with them. Um, and I think, you know, you're not speaking out of school, the, the unanimous vote of the... Hour and a half. It was an hour and a half, yeah. The unanimous vote of the committee was that they made a phenomenal presentation. Um, <coughs> we were really um, impressed with the professionalism, the organizational management, the data-driven analysis, the quality metrics that they brought to the table, the technology in particular uh, was outstanding. So uh, so what we did that night was we then were basically charged with qualifying them. Is this a qualified bid? And again, unanimously, we gave them the highest ranking um, in accordance with the bid document. After that, David then was able to open the actual bid. Um, so the bid <coughs> that they've submitted that you have in front of you here um, would effectively you know, double 
with the costs that we're currently paying, knowing, however, we are, you know, uh, we're at the end of that contract cycle with Amherst, and we're going to be going back to the table with them anyway. So at this point, um, the committee had agreed that depending on the outcome, of this that we would reconvene so we have another meeting scheduled for next, uh, two, two weeks 19th Tuesday the 19th we're planning on meeting again um, so we're going to regroup we're going to discuss this we are also going to have some additional conversation with the town of Amherst um, David talked to Paul Bachman today and Amherst is interested in continuing the conversation um, we would also like to go back to Action EMS and really dig into their costs because uh, we want to make sure that whatever um, bidding they've done was on the best information they had, but we haven't had a chance to dig into yeah. and find out is there some other, uh, perhaps a modified version of this that might work for us as well. So more work to do. Um, Sounds like an excellent plan. Okay, and so right, that's... We're, uh, we're anyway. also going to uh, do reference checks yes. on other towns that they're... I was going to say, right, before we get too far, how, yeah. how do the private concerns work with uh, mutual aid with the town concerns? Well, we had really nice uh, letters from Holyoke, which okay. where they are. Uh, hand in hand is the answer, though, right? Hand in hand. Hand in hand, yeah. okay. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, that was one of the cons mm -hmm. concern questions. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the other one is, even at 295000 still still... Uh, I don't see 1.6 million for a full-time fire department and ambulance service here. Mm -hmm. Quite okay. honestly. So anyway, that's where the that's where the committee stands. Some more more work to do to dig into this. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the hard work, though. I mean, that was great. Okay. okay. FY19 budget discussion. How about the water payment? Oh no, we didn't do that. Ambulance discussion budget. Okay. I'm just going in order. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't make budget. it go faster by swapping around. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, so goals and objectives, uh, town meeting warrant. David, did you want to? Um, there's been a couple of additions to the draft warrant. Uh, a, uh, uh, you all took the vote to support the concept of joining a mosquito control district, so that that. Uh, Article is now added in the assessors uh, have added a elderly exemption on real estate taxes uh, uh, Article so that would give the, the elderly a break on their taxes to the tune of hundred and seventy five dollars a year uh, So what's the that, definition of elderly? I'm sorry. What's the definition of elderly? Be somebody who uh, was uh, 65 years older and who had assets not counting their house or mortgage of forty thousand dollars or less. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so I, I have an article I'd like to consider putting on here, at least as a placeholder for further discussion. Always for further discussion, right? Um, I, you know, in the spirit of uh, trying to move forward with the implementation of some of the recommendations that have been made to us over the years. Um, if we could talk about making the collector and treasurer positions, um, not not moving forward with the combination, but um, changing them from elected to appointed, and, and the, the, again just have the placeholder on the um, on the warrant for the time being, so we can talk more about that. So five years ago we did this the last time, Joyce. Yeah. About five. And it was. More discussion we had, but it was not very well received. Yeah, well, I think that the last changed. I'm not so sure that we have the same level of um, okay. resistance that that we might have five years ago. Okay. We had some players change, and, and again, we continue to get the recommendations to from state, right? D, D O R, D O R, right? D -O -R. yeah, yeah. Put it on. Yeah, again, mm -hmm. we can always take it off. David, you mind? Um, I'll write it up right now. So just conceptual language. Yeah. Um, Joyce, I don't know if I've been down there. Is your baby road bridge straightened out? It straightened out. I told Marlo there was a few barrels still on there. So we might look well, at it, it tomorrow the, morning. The was put down. 
so somehow we need to move forward and figure out what sort of um, instruction we're going to be providing to the department heads. And David, today at the department head meeting, you you pretty much at this point have everybody going on what I'm going to refer to as the kind of the, the grunt work. I mean, no matter no matter what the instructions are, there's still a certain amount of work that needs to be done to look at your prior year actuals and you know look at your staffing and all of that other stuff. So I think all of the departments are already working with that information. Right. There are certain things that don't change from year to year. Uh, the, the vehicles need gasoline. The uh, lights need electricity. Um, we need to have trash pickup. We need custodial services. So the departments can be working on those parts of the budget that are recurring and, re and required. So, um, you know, the, the mandates in each department. Yeah, state, whatever mandates, whatever contractual uh, arrangements are, are happening. So uh, I'm having them work on that, but we're, we're waiting for the directions from the board. What's the uh, noise bylaw? What's that about? The noise bylaw, this is, uh, we have a noise bylaw on the books right now that works really, really well for college parties, particularly at night. Um, but it doesn't work well for other noise complaints that we receive. Parking so, dogs. What's well, another noise complaint? Yeah, so the, the complaint, the, the, the dispute between the neighbors uh, at the malting operation on Middle Street. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the occasional noise complaints that were received from parties on East Street at the Young Men's Club. Uh, we don't want to have a situation where we're where we're so technical in our in our noise measurement that we need physicists recording decibels from multiple locations. That's unwieldy. That's un impractical. We don't want to be in a situation where any noise at all generates a findable offense for people. So we're trying to find some common sense middle ground to make this noise bylaw that we already have uh, more more applicable to other situations other than college parties. Does the chief have recommendations from us? Has he done some research in other communities to provide us with something that would be, or I, I, I know it's just, you know, it's rel relatively simplistic here, but it's is he researching that in other communities? Right, so we went out on the, uh, the resource list and uh, solicited uh, noise bylaws from other towns. So we got about a dozen samples. The chief, is, chief of police is working on uh, coming up with something that's workable. He's also, t he's also talked about another bylaw uh, that he may want to submit. And what was that about? Uh, he mentioned it at the a department head meeting today, and he said that he's researched um, what other towns have to deal with um, buildings oh, that were have like you know blight basically. That uh, you know if people have graffiti on their property and it's um, unattractive offensive. and offensive, yeah. that they need, and so it would actually give him the teeth to fine. Um, Whatever. I mean, that, that was one example. So he's um, planning on submitting some language to David before the deadline on that as well. In the absence of a bylaw, is there no board of health or no? Uh, we, you can take a property due to blight, but I mean, right. You a, really a need to get to a pretty you bad need a bylaw for yeah, it to be offensive. Well, you have a state law, you have Mass General Law, Chapter 111, that covers health and human habitation. Um, but you really need to be in you need to be in code violation basically before you can really pull that trigger. Okay. So just going back to the budget. Um, so at the last meeting we talked about you know that we needed to do two things. One was to really nail down the revenues and make sure all of the revenues were for accounted for. And I know that. Um, Linda Sanderson, in particular, has been spending a fair amount of time and working with Dan Zadonik and David on, on crossing the T's and dotting the I's on every single revenue line item. Um, and there's been some some positive discovery in that regard, but nothing, nothing that big. <laughs> and then we also talked on the expense side about before we sit down and figure out, <clears throat> and John, I'm sorry you missed some of this, but it's important if we're talking about potentially increasing services that we have a much better handle on what 
again, monetarily, what are we talking about? Are we talking $50,000, $250,000? So we did establish some small working groups. Um, so I know that, so it was information technology, human resources, and you were looking into um, starting a conversation about uh, potential regionalization. Were those the only three? Oh, no, I think we also talked about the finance, which I don't think we've done anything with that yet. But um, so the information technology group, um, we did meet, and um, David today has the follow-up material that was missing um, to establish the <coughs> domain server as a first step that we could move forward with. But David um, just got that, and he's going to be sending that around. So watch email. Okay, so so we're working with the intent of, of again, coming up with a, a number, if you will, um, um, and a plan. And I don't know, on, on human resource, Jerry, have you guys met? Or? We have not met, no. Okay. Because um, we were hoping to try to get these done by, you know, the end of the year or as close to the first of the year as possible. And Joyce, I know there's, I know Mike said there's been some conversations that he started yeah. in that regard. Where's the school at with all of this? So, yeah, I mean, the school was represented at the tri board meeting, and they said that they were more than happy to participate in the discussion on IT and human resources, right? Yeah, but yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. They wanted to be part of the discussion. Yeah. yeah. So it will be, you know, any possibility of shared resources is definitely, mm -hmm. um, we want to fully vet that. Yeah, I know I had mentioned the schools and I had mentioned on the county level, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's Franklin County or Hampshire County. Uh, although we pulled out of Hampshire County right now, they seem... Well, we're still in. We're still in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have notified them. And they seem to be getting a little bit more active. Do you have a report for us? Yeah. Did you have a meeting? Sure. Uh, yeah, so I attended one of their full board meetings. I was also placed on their uh, regional services committee and strategic planning committee. So what I will say is that they have a very clear understanding and appreciation of the problems they have and how systemic they are as an organization. Um, at least at the board level, and everyone I've talked to, uh, understands that there's a real need for a regional service provider, whether that's as a nerve center for collaboration between communities or as a straight service provider for things like we're talking about, whether it's IT, HR, finance, among other things. Um, Frankly, it's still up in the air whether the HCG can be that organization due to the legislation that enables them or due to the, just the challenges they have financially and otherwise. Um, but a lot of work's being done reaching out to state legislation or state, state legislators to see if there's any avenues for us to pursue since we're such an odd case in terms of we're not a regional planning agency and there aren't many other organizations like the HCG and Mr. Matz. So we're looking to collaborate with the state, long story short. Um, in the meantime, they're focused on obviously the new rebranding effort as the HCG instead of the HCOG. Um, more public transparency. Um, they are taking the audit and that whole process very seriously in terms of both what it's impacting them financially and the Hampshire power business and just their entire reputation amongst the communities. Um, and they understand that moving forward, they're going to need the, really the participation of all of the Hampshire County communities in some fashion. Um, this is this is the board this as well? Board. Yeah, specifically the, the board? Specifically the board, and then that distilled down into the Strategic Planning Committee. Um, so while it's always started at the board level, the Strategic Planning Committee is tasked with really, whether it's writing a letter to the state legislatures or coming up with a way forward, as it were. Um, so that's all I've been able to get out of those two meetings, and uh, still a lot to learn, both history-wise and about the organization itself. Do you have a meeting this month, Gabriel? Yes, I think the 14th is our next full board meeting. Okay. And um, is your date financial information going really to be available at that meeting? I don't think at that meeting. Um, Not until January? Not until January because they're really making an effort to do everything on a cash basis now. As we remember, that was an issue before. So they really want to get everything reconciled and reported very accurately before presenting anything, okay. even amongst the board members. Okay. Yeah. Right, but when we get that, we'll be happy to pass along. Thank you. HR is still in there. 
um, I know that we were talking about when we had a presentation that they were looking at establishing an HR uh, support center for yeah, the municipalities. Is that that's on the agenda? That's part of the regional services committee, which I have not yet met with. Okay, but I sit on that, so I will. Be. Thank you. I think they submitted a grant for that uh, with the Commonwealth Cap uh, Compact. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have more work to do then on those subgroups. Um, and again, I know that the department heads are, are starting to clamor for obstruction, but as long as they're, they've got their sleeves rolled up, there's no question and they're working um, hard already. And I think as long as we provide that by the beginning of, or around the beginning of January, it should be fine. Um, but I think what we kind of concluded with the look at the first pass on revenues and again, there's been a little bit more, you know, dig digging in under the hood. But I think um, reasonably what we're looking at is about a $400,000 increase. You, yeah, I think you had 360. We said, uh, you know. It could be a size 500, depending. That would be a stretch, yeah. 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 But say comfortably we can assume 400, and if the gravy gets a little yeah. thicker, that's awesome. I'd, I'd stay on a conservative side first. Yeah. So, yeah, putting that in context, the next step is, is David is working now on taking the existing budget and then just kind of looking at the, the uncontrollable line items, you know, state aid, that kind of state assessments, I should say, to see, you know, I mean, I think we all know that based on past experience that 400000 is probably already accounted for just by rolling from one year to the other. Um, so, but... Well, you have a target date to have kind of that initial look at expenses, or right. So the revenue consent agenda or the number should be available today. We we're having hearings in Boston on that, so that give me a sense of you know how much are the economy expected to grow overall. Uh, that will give me a sense of how much we can uh, adjust our um, our local receipts as well as what can we expect from the state aid. Uh, in past years, that number has been overly optimistic. So if they come back and say growth is going to be at four percent, I'm going to say I don't believe it. Two percent, I can believe. Um, I'm working with the accountant right now in order to come up with a more accurate figure for the administrative chargebacks, which is both the expense and the revenue source. So things are beginning to come together. The, the numbers that we're looking for are, are beginning to gel up. Okay. And the finance committee, are you guys meeting? Or probably the 21st. Okay. Okay. You're hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> right before the holiday. Well, we were we, we did a conduct meeting this week, and um, next week doesn't seem like it's going to work. So. Would you guys pull names and you got to exchange presents or what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, when are we doing it? <laughs> I want you. All right. <laughs> what can you get? The guy that's got everything. Yeah, yeah. seriously. She's gonna give me a new car over there on the table. So, so David, David. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> serious. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that catch? That was on TV. Uh, <laughs> so, 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 I think there are a couple of slam dunks here. First of all, I told the department heads that the articles. The warrant will be closed on Valentine's Day, which we do at just about that time every year, February 14th. Are we still thinking that's even an appropriate time for the warrant to be closed and we can start tightening that, that up? Is there anything wrong with that date? No, I have no opinion on that. Okay. that just fine. Sounds fine. We'll, okay. We can always extend it. We always extend it a week or two anyway, I'm sure. The other, the other date is um, January 9th, so Tuesday. That's good. You want to just go right into the, oh. we have the schedule for 2018. Well oh, sure. Run okay. right down. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, two birds and one stone, just for you. All right, so I've suggested a, uh, a countdown calendar for the select board uh, <laughs> to the annual town meeting and a little bit beyond. Um, Three meetings in January, three in February, two in March. We may have to change that. Uh, four meetings in April and three meetings in May. Uh, Tri-board at the beginning, first meeting of every month. 
Uh, January 9th would be an all boards meeting. That's a Tuesday. We do have room reserved for doing that. We have a temporary reservation. We have a temporary reservation. We have a temporary reservation. And that all boards meeting, and I think tentatively we're talking about having the updated master plan as the focal point of our discussion. So the planning board will take a, a central role in presenting that information, and that'll help us think about where strategically we want the town of Hadley to go. Warren closes on February 14th. April 25th, we have to sign the warrant public forum on the annual town meeting on April 26th and a week later we have our town meeting. And I, I uh, suggested two, two meetings in March because it's very often some sort of break for those people who have children. You mean college children? Yeah. It's the break section in February for school age children. Yeah. Okay. Seems appropriate. Seems okay with the calendar. Are yeah, right, you guys good with that too? Finance committee? Yeah, because you, you listed the actually. first week for the um, tri board. Is that what you just said? Yeah, yeah. January 3rd. 3rd. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. We have a meeting next week on Wednesday. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else on the budget at the moment? Water abatement, 111 Lucky Hill Road. Software error. Software error, so. Motion is approved. Say, yeah. Second? I guess I can. Okay. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oops, same. Okay. And I think that covers that. David, is there anything we need to know before we adjourn the meeting? Uh, go to uh, I think that we have our first, well, right now there's a uh, gathering over at the library by the Friends of the uh, Cooper Memorial Library. I don't know if they're still there, but drop on by and uh, uh, see their presentation, support them. I think I ended at 8, didn't I? No. Well, it's either going to be a dark building or a brightly lit building, so we'll figure it out when we leave. And there's the, um, the Festival of Lights. It'll be our first annual over mm -hmm. at the gazebo over at the Hopkins Academy. And uh, the, the fire department, uh, Friends of the Fire Association, are having a comedy night this week as well. So lots of things coming up. And we have uh, the usual holiday gatherings, which will delight one and all. At Saturday nights, the, the lighting floor that we have over here, yes, yes. At the Festival of Lights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is there not a uh, dedication of the tree collection for um, oh toys toys to yes. be brought, which will be uh, donated to the Shriners Hospital, I believe. Yeah, the stuff a tr stuff a truck stuff a truck stuff a truck. So anybody who's attending the uh, Mike Spank, they will mention that at the department head meeting. So if anybody can, um, they're doing it a little bit differently. In the past, they've done toys for tots. But this year they um, really wanted to have that more tangible outreach and so our fire department will be able to actually deliver it right directly to Shriners to the kids so they're pretty excited about that so I hope that everybody can support that please join us on Saturday night at six o'clock over at Hopkins Academy at the gazebo okay. and anything else one more we have a wonderful wreaths decorating our front doors again on the town hall and um, the sign and again they're donated to us from Tom Giles and the Hadley Garden Center. Yes. So thank you Tom, we appreciate it very much. And Janine. And Janine. <laughs> Dom and Janine. <laughs> True. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night everybody. All right. Till next, next time.